from Morris et al, a car that should never really have existed, as it was a stopgap, a cheapish refresh of the Morris Marina that kept the range looking fresh until the delayed launch of the Austin Montego in 1984. Styled in Italy, built in Britain, and there's the first lie of this brochure. As we all know, the Ital name comes from Giorgetto Giugiaro's design house, Ital Design, but they didn't really style the Ital at all. It was done at Longbridge by Harris Mann's team. But British Leyland was preoccupied with its priority, the little Austin Metro that would also be launched in 1980. That meant there wasn't the capacity to fully develop another new car. So they shipped it off to Ital Design for them to get ready for production. Their role was to take the marina and reclothe it in Harris Mann's bodywork. It is rumoured, however, that they messed it up, and that work ended up being done by the apprentices at Cowley, the only resource they had left. Whatever the exact truth is, the car was definitely not styled in Italy. The story is pretty nice though, and Ital Design did let BL use their premises in the advert for the car. It says up here, about quality and pedigree and all the kind of stuff you usually find in a car brochure. But what I do love about this page is the cool cutaway diagrams of the car. They're just a nice thing. There's the front of your Ital. And if we open it up there, again, styled in Italy. And again, another lie, but the shape was much more modern than the Marina. It shares some similarities with the Metro in this area, also worked on by Harris Mann, with its rectangular headlamps, a simple slatted grille, and a front spoiler, and of course lots and lots of black trim. It's nowhere near as modern as something like a Ford Sierra, but it was far more modern for 1980 than the old Marina was. I'm not a massive fan of the Ital styling, but for 1980 this was better. Uh, just for clarity, I think a 1.8 um, series 1 Marina is absolutely brilliant. But, rule one for doing a car brochure, do not, whatever you do, zoom in on a slightly ill-fitting indicator. Before you comment though, it's pretty normal to have an indicator and a lamp not quite line up in this era of cars. My Metro, again another Austin Rover product, the indicator isn't perfectly lined up with the light either, but it's the same on both sides, so I suppose that's okay. And they've done it again, look. At the back, I mean, look at that up there. Um, yeah, so there's the rear end, and here is more of the rear end. Vinyl roof and all. But I love particularly the steelies and the hubcap on this one. The Atal was never meant to be an engineering marvel. Everybody knows that the Marina was old fashioned when it was launched in 1971, but the Atal was quite cheap and it provided simple transport, and I understand that. What I can't quite understand is the dashboard. It's the same one introduced on the Marina 2 in 1976, and it's just not very good in my opinion. It curves away from the driver. It's quite bland and nothing's in particularly easy reach. In fact, it's a retrograde step than the one in the Marina because it loses the tachometer on the top models, just like the Ambassador did. And that's a decision I just do not understand. As I touched on, the Ital's best points were its simplicity and its economy. And there are performance figures over here. Um, and it mentions the 1.7 will cruise at over 40 MPG, which is all right for the era. And that the two litre is the most economical on the market. Oh, I just thought I'd mention, I love the lettering used on early 80s Austin Rover products. I mean, I, I just think it's cool. Interior comfort is an integral part of the Ital concept. Every Ital has room for five people and their luggage with 12.9 cubic feet of usable boot space in the saloon. With the rear seat folded down, the estate accommodates a massive 58.4 cubic feet. Wow. Uh, we'll get on to the estate on the next page, but here's some more paprika for you all to enjoy, just like in the Metro brochure. And some new door handles as well, also from the Metro. It's a shame they didn't go and put a new dash in as well, but oh well. Here we have manufacturing stuff. This is a very, very typical for a BL brochure of this era, where they talk about 
uh, their manufacturing processes and how they are making a quality car. Into the manufacture of every Morris Ital goes all the experience and expertise associated with one of Britain's most respected names in automotive engineering, Morris. In its progress from initial body shell to finished car, a Morris et al. passes through the ruthless examination of 145 trained inspectors. Once a shift, an Etal frame is tested to destruction to assure consistency of construction and strength. Every car is fully undersealed against abrasion and corrosion, electrophoretically primed and sealed, and then coated with three stove-baked layers of paint. Paintwork is hand finished and internal body sills and cross members are treated with weatherproof, long lasting wax protection. Throughout the development of the Ital, cars have been brutally subjected to environmental and endurance testing to ensure that they are tough and reliable. Itals have been driven through the heat of Arizona deserts, through sub-zero temperatures of the Arctic and driven at full throttle for thousands of miles on the autobahns of West Germany. Itals have been slammed into concrete barriers at 30 miles per hour and wheel locked into curbs and potholes. Their suspension, wheels, engines and controls have all been subjected to the worst conditions possible in the belief that if they survive as successfully as they have, they will provide you with years of enjoyable, economical and trouble-free motoring. As a final small touch, every Ital we make has its manufacturing history recorded on microfilm. Should your Morris dealer ever need reference during routine 12,000 mile services. An Ital is an individual built for individuals to enjoy. Now we move on to the huge Ital estates you can see here. Um, and what a colour that saloon is. I think that's Applejack. I'm pretty sure that's Applejack. It's just wonderful. Um, and if we go over here, we see just how huge it is. The big sofa in the back of that. I mean, the original Marina was proportioned to compete with the Mark II Ford Cortina, but then the Mark III was launched, which suddenly made the Marina look quite compact. And of course that continues with the Ital, but they are still very big, they just don't have the girth of some competitors. And here is some of the Ital range. And this does show just how much smarter the HLS looks with its vinyl roof and its chrome trim around the grille. And now there's a bit of repetition coming in here at the top with the fuel economy stuff and a nice diagram with everything that Austin Morris wants you to know about the new Ital. This long piece here about the engineering start with more on the build quality. It name checks Press Steel Fisher that's now the BMW Mini Factory in Oxford, and then goes into the performance and engines. The only change under the skin from the Marina was the 1.3 litre A plus engine, the one that was being developed especially for the Metro that would be launched in October 1980. The Ital was launched in the June. And finally, if we flick over this section here, here are your features, your optional extras, and your tech specs, if you're interested. Now, on the back, the studio program for the Morris Ital, which is just awesome. Apart from the sunroof, there's something a little bit Eastern block about this beige Ital with stripes down the side. But anyway, there you go, a very quick look at the Morris Ital. But one final thing to note though is the price list, uh, dated 2nd of July 1980. There you go. So if you ever wondered how much a Morris Ital cost, then here you go. So, that was a very quick look at another part of the Marina story. I've already done two Marina brochures and I thought I'd just add on this Ital brochure at the end here because that sort of completes it a little bit. So thank you very much for watching and an enormous thank you to Robert for sending me this brochure. And I'm sure he's watching. He's the one that's made this video possible. If you enjoyed it, please do click like and subscribe as well. I'll have another one coming along soon.